Welcome everybody to today's Transfer Express webinar. Hello, my name is Andy Curtis. I'm the Senior Manager of Customer Service and Graphic Design here at Transfer Express. And it is my pleasure to join you this beautiful Thursday for what promises to be a fun webinar. If you've joined me before, then welcome back. I appreciate seeing you back here. Um, I already see a couple names that I recognize. If you are new to our little family, then welcome. Thank you for joining us. Um, in the meantime, if you have any questions, go ahead and pop them into the chat box here, and I will do my best to answer them as we go. Um, now, I am only one person, so if I am in the middle of a sentence, and uh, if you've joined me before, you know that I can talk for 45 straight minutes. Um, if I'm in the middle of a sentence and I miss your question, then my helper behind the curtain is going to pop in here and uh, help me keep an eye on those questions and answer them. Um, in the meantime, though, uh, we will go ahead and get on with our topic today, which is start your own clothing brand from home. Start your own clothing brand from home. I think that this is probably the most uh, valid and, and um, most identifiable topic <laughs> that we could be doing right now. Uh, I know that uh, we're all hoping that uh, COVID is winding down now that vaccines are happening and stuff and, and life is going to get back to some semblance of normalcy. Um, but it in the time before we do get away from COVID, we know that right now home-based businesses are booming even more than they ever have. And I, I can say this as, as a guy who comes from an entrepreneurial family, but also as a guy who's worked at Transfer Express for 19 years, um, it is uh, uh, definitely a lot of home-based businesses happening right now. A lot of people doing business um, doing business from home and working from home and, and finding ways to uh, make money from home. And right now, this is the moment. This is the opportune time. Uh, we see a lot of people getting into the garment decoration industry. It is on fire. It is exploding. Um, and we're going to talk about today how to do that. How do you start a clothing brand from home? How do you go about doing that? Um, so, uh, yes, uh, there is, I, I have slides here. I just have not uh, progressed on to the next slide yet. So um, let's go ahead, uh, let's go ahead and start us off. So uh, the agenda today, we're going to talk about what do you need to do to start? What will you sell? Where will you find customers? How will you sell? And marketing your business. So now, Basically, the idea here is I, I my goal in the next 45 minutes to hour here, my goal is to give you ideas. I want to put a whole bunch of ideas in your head. Now, I can't do um, I uh, can't do the work for you. I can't uh, tell you exactly how to start your business. I can't tell you all of the steps that you need to take necessarily. Um, but I can certainly help you by giving you some of the steps that you should take, some things that you should think about, and I'm going to put some ideas out there on ways that you could move forward with a business. So in the end of the day, you got to do the legwork here. you got to do the hard part, but I can certainly help give you some ideas to get that started. Or if nothing else, hopefully we get your creative juices flowing. Hopefully we put some ideas out there that you can then take and run with. So that's going to be the goal. And, that, and these are the things that we're going to talk about. Um, so uh, let's go ahead and we are going to start. Um, and, and for those of you just joining, I do see a whole bunch of people just joined. Yes, we are recording the webinar. Um, it will be, uh, the link will be sent out to you via email. Yes, uh, the webinar will be posted at transferexpress.com backslash webinars. Um, and you'll get a copy of the slides too. So everything will be emailed. All right, guys. So uh, <laughs> Stacy the helper, no. Uh, Stacy is one of my phone reps, though, Don. She's out on the floor right now. I can uh, almost see her from where I'm sitting, as a matter of fact. Uh, behind the curtain is is our friend Mike from marketing, actually. So not somebody you guys have talked to on the phone before. All right, so let's start here. So how do you start a clothing business from home? Where do you start? Where do we begin this journey? And the start is a heat press. So all you need is a heat press. If you're going to do uh, any kind of home decorating, if you're going to start your clothing brand from home, if you're going to do the whole home decorating, uh, garment decorating at home situation, all you need is a heat press. 
You don't need expensive equipment. You don't need to go out and buy screen printing equipment. You don't need to go out and buy a DTG machine. You don't need to go out and buy those things. They are incredibly expensive, incredibly expensive. You can buy just a heat press to start your home decorating business, and it is incredibly cost effective. Uh, so you start off just with a heat press. That's all you really need to go. So uh, shirts and transfers can be purchased once you receive your heat press. So once you've got your heat press, you order the blank garments, you order the transfers from us here at Transfer Express, and that's all. You, you need the t-shirts, you need the transfers, and you need the heat press, and that's all you need. Uh, so one of the secrets to this, one of the ways uh, that people get started looking into their heat presses and such is looking over all the heat press options and, and you see all these different types of presses and you ask yourself, well, oh my gosh, where do I start? Where do I go? And it's so funny because 15 years ago, uh, Tisha, you, you read my mind. That's exactly where we're going right now. 15 years ago, there were only so many options. Right. And it's kind of funny because, you know, we could have told you exactly how to start your business. Here's the press you want. Here's what you need to do. Today's day and age, there are so many types of heat presses out there. Here's the big secret. Here's the big secret. Start with the best press that your budget allows. Do not cut corners with your heat press. All right. All right. So uh, I'll talk about suggestions on affordable heat presses in just a second, but what I want you guys to understand first, do not cut corners with your heat press. And please, I say this as the guy who's been helping you all for the last 20 years with your troubleshooting issues, your application issues. I'm that guy that answers the emails. I'm the guy that helps out on the web chats. I'm the guy that helps you, you folks when we have these types of issues. And as the guy who's been doing this for a long, long, long time, I promise you that having a good, reliable heat press is the cornerstone. This is the most important part of your business. If you're going to work from home, if you're going to make a go of this and you're going to make it happen, you are only as good as the equipment you purchase. So purchase a bargain basement heat press off of a, a website that doesn't specialize in this kind of thing. And there's no sort of uh, warranty and there's no sort of guarantee. Then boy, howdy, you are setting yourself up for failure. Oh, Judge Beckton, very good thought there, Judge. Uh, yeah, I tried to cut corners on that, ended up purchasing another. We hear this all the time. We hear this all the time, folks. And I'm not saying this because I'm trying to drive you to buy one of our heat presses. At the end of the day, even if you don't buy one of our heat presses at uh, one of our Hotronics presses, even if you buy a different name brand, the whole point is don't purchase a bargain basement overseas heat press from Amazon or eBay. Don't do it. Uh, and Peter, we're actually going to cover that on the next slide. So hang hang tight on that thought for just a second here. Um, so uh, my point here is that you do not want to screw yourself over here by buying a bargain heat press. Uh, and the reason for that is the bargain heat presses, A, their heat is not even. It won't be even across the top of the platen. You'll have cold spots. You'll learn very quickly that, okay, I've got to move my transfer over and I have to press it weird because that part of my press is cold or even worse sometimes the metal of the upper platen on those bargain presses isn't actually flat it's not actually flat and it's it, there's an actual uneven pressure to the heat press so you lock it down and the transfer is not getting even pressure because the metal is warped okay uh, so at the end of the day uh, the whole point here is there's so many things that can go wrong and I see a bunch of you guys telling i see a whole bunch of me too's here too uh xyla you had an issue too huh um so uh lots of people huh i see that um so the point is this is the big secret as many years as i've been assisting with application issues and talking customers through the application problems they have this is always the part that is hairiest 
when we go through all the time and temperature, how are you pressing it? How are you using the transfers? And then we go through everything and it sounds right. And then we get to talking about the heat press itself and discover, oh, you have a brandless heat press that doesn't even have a name. And suddenly, okay, so this is where the problem's at. And that's a horrible place to be because you've got an order that you're trying to get done. You've got something you're trying to finish and suddenly you can't because your heat press isn't working properly. Um, so, uh, the whole point here, when, when you purchase the right press, the right press will last you for years. And one of my, one of my favorite things to tell trainees here at Transfer Express, when you start in our customer service department, we have a black Hotronics air swinger that is uh, as old as I am. <laughs> I kid you not. I kid you not. We have a black Hotronics air swinger here at our facility that is as, it might be a couple of years younger, but just about out as old as I am. And it works. We've had to have it serviced a couple times. Don't get me wrong. I mean, 30 something year old heat press, it, it's needed, you know, some work over the years. But the point is that it still lasts. Um, and it's, it's a workhorse. So you absolutely, you absolutely need to buy a press that you can rely on. Okay, so this is the starting place. Now, um, with that being said, keeping in mind, you've got to buy a press that you can rely on. I saw, I think it was Peter, uh, asked about the Cricut Easy Press. Okay, so, so let's talk about this part here. So number one, when you're starting off and you're looking at heat presses for decorating, I need everybody to hear me clearly. When you're looking at heat presses for decorating, do not purchase an iron. Okay, if, if you get nothing else out of me today, do not purchase an iron. The reason for this is your home iron, and I if, if I had a dollar for every time over the, the years, I've heard somebody say, but Andy, it's a really nice iron. Okay, I don't, I don't care. <laughs> an iron is not going to get hot enough, number one, and even if it does, it's not going to be continuously evenly hot enough. Number two, irons are probably not the right size. Unless you're pressing something very small, your iron is not going to be big enough. And number three you're not going to be able to press hard enough for long enough consistently to make that iron cooperate, okay? At the end of the day, are there people who have finagled ways and manipulated ways to press tiny little transfers with an iron? Yeah, there's probably stories and ways to do that, but you, you don't want to rely on that because when you've used an iron and you've done something unreliable that way, we can't help you and back you up. We can't assist you if there were to be problems with adhesion. Um, you, you don't want to go there. So now, with this being said, again, I think it was Peter who asked this specifically, the Cricut Easy Press. So the, and that's what we have uh, in the picture here for those of you who aren't familiar. The problem with this Easy Press is that at the end of the day, and I'm not downing it, I'm just pointing out at the end of the day, this is not actually a heat press, guys. The Cricut Easy Press is a big square iron, actually. And there's nothing wrong with that. There are definitely uses for the Cricut Easy Press. It is a, a good piece of machinery for what it's made for. The problem is for our products here at Transfer Express, for genuine screen printed transfers and for high quality digital transfers, there are three things you need. You need time, temperature, and pressure. <laughs> Francisco, I wouldn't waste my time with it. I was trying to be politically correct, Francisco. <laughs> um, so you need time, temperature, those are the three things that a heat press provides, time, temperature, and pressure, okay? The easy press gets up to the proper temperature, sure. It can get up to 400 degrees, so you can hit the right temperature. The problem with the easy press is that it doesn't provide any pressure. The pressure comes from you. So there are people who do use the Easy Press and they say they can get it to work. I myself have played with an Easy Press and I've made it work. But I can tell you that after a couple transfers, my upper body was sore, okay? You have to press because the normally with a commercial heat press, like a Hotronics heat press, the heat press generates the pressure needed. That pressure is what makes a transfer want to come off the paper and stick to the garment. So without pressure, You've got the heat that's activating the adhesive, and without pressure, maybe the ink does come off the paper, but there's no pressure to make it want to stay in the garment. 
So what ends up happening is you wash that garment and the transfer comes right off. <laughs> it is a workout, Terry. So you can make it work. It is possible. But boy, howdy, I don't suggest this. I don't think that it's worth it. Now, if you're going to press one or two transfers at a time and they're going to be tiny and you've got the upper body that you're going to press that sucker, then knock yourself out. But at the end of the day, it's not a long-term solution for a home-based business. Every customer that I've talked to that is trying to make a successful business, if, it, if this is a hobby for you, then there's nothing wrong with the Cricut Press. If you're trying to evolve this from a hobby to an actual home-based full-on business that you're going to support yourself and your family, then trust me when I tell you this is not the way to do it. OK, and it's funny because as I'm talking, I'm seeing you guys, you're a very talkative crowd today. I'm seeing you guys pop these comments in and I see that a lot of you guys have done this. You guys have purchased the easy press. I see a lot of you guys um, and I see a lot of people saying they regret it. Um, so, yes, absolutely. For a smaller logo and when you want to do something small and you need only like one or two pieces, Peter, the Easy Press does do the job. And it's again, it's not a terrible piece of equipment. I am by no means downing it. I think it's genius on some level, actually. Somebody at Cricket deserves a medal for it, but it's just not practical for our industry long term when you're trying to create a home-based business. So which heat press should you get? What heat press should you get? Consider these four things, budget, space, volume, and location. And here's what I mean. So number one, budget, we all get that. How much money do you have to spend, okay? My suggestion, my favorite starting place for a heat press is the hot, tr or I'm sorry, the so uh, the Stalls Max is my favorite starter heat press. It, it, it's a little bit on the expensive side for a starter heat press, but the warranty is fantastic. The machine is reliable. It is a good, heavy, well-made machine that lasts for a long time. I love the Max that we have here at our facility. That's my favorite press personally. Um, but budget, of course, obviously, how much money do you have to spend? Number two, though, space. Um, so space and location are very similar. So space and location, where are you doing the pressing at? How much room do you have? We've had this happen before where customers will buy a fusion heat press and then realize afterwards, oh my God, I don't have the space for this thing. The fusion press is a great press, but the upper platen swings out. So if you don't have room, if you haven't accommodated yourself, if you're trying to turn your, you know, your broom closet into your workspace, and there's nothing wrong with that. We all know what that's like. Um, point is you've only got so much room to work with uh, one of my favorite favorite examples of this actually we have customers that are uh, frat kids living in frat houses uh, and we've seen pictures of some of their workspaces where these guys have actually turned their closet in their frat room their their dorm turned their closet into their heat press space genius but you can't buy a press that's going to take up a huge footprint of space you know what I mean um, I see a couple people asking about the A to Z press. So again, the A to Z press is a fantastic starter press. I love the A to Z press, um, but again, you want to keep in mind that the A to Z press takes up a little bit of extra space because of that whole swing feature. And unlike the Fusion, the A to Z press doesn't draw out. It only swings. So still a great press, but you got to make sure you have room for it. Okay. Um, and then volume. Volume is another big part. How many shirts are you going to press at a time? And that's one of the problems with the Cricut Press there. Can you make the Cricut Press work? Sure. But do you want to do a whole class of 30 kids on that Cricut Press? Dear Lord, no. Um, so when it comes to volume, how many press shirts are you going to be pressing at a time? If you think you're going to be doing large orders, then you should get a press that can accommodate that and something that won't be quite so painful. Um, uh, you need to uh, you need to make sure you're accommodating yourself with a press that will uh, be a workhorse if you're going to be a workhorse. OK, um, now, with all that being said, uh, I have a link here, a bit.ly link. Uh, this is a great PDF for all of you guys. Um, who are starting off and at the beginning and looking to buy your heat press, maybe you haven't bought it yet, check out this bit.ly link. Uh, it is a great PDF that will actually give you a, a much longer version of what I just told you, a longer version of the things to look for in a heat press. Um, 
Uh, Sherry, when I say uh, the A to Z doesn't draw out, what I mean is that the lower platen where you actually place your garment, Sherry, uh, on the fusion press, the lower platen pulls out. So even if you have your press in a very small area, instead of swinging the upper platen, you can pull it out. The A to Z press doesn't pull out. It just swings. So you have to make sure you have a good footprint of space to work there. Okay. Um, so this is that's our suggestion on where to start. Make sure the heat press you're purchasing is a good quality press. Uh, remember that you are hinging your business on this piece of equipment. You're starting a home-based business. It is all on the foundation of your heat press. If you buy a cruddy heat press to start your home-based business, you have started your business on a cruddy foundation. And trust me when I tell you, we've seen it over and over again. OK, make sure you buy a press that is going to be worth your time. You don't want to buy something that you're just going to be replacing in two months. There we go. Oops. All right. So beyond the heat press, what else do you need to start? This is a question we get a lot of. Uh, so beyond the heat press, you also should think about getting a sales tax ID. Here's why. Number one, it's not required to do business at Transfer Express, but at some point in the very near future, and I don't have a date for you guys, so don't ask me before you all start asking when. I don't have a date. We, we haven't confirmed a date yet, but at some point in the very near future, Transfer Express is going to start charging sales tax. It will be certain states that are rolled out at a time, but the point that I'm making here is that uh, is that if if you have a, a if you've got your proper paperwork and you don't have to be charged tax, then that will be a benefit to you. Obviously, sales tax is coming, and if you uh, if you can get around that, if you can uh, get your sales tax ID, if you can be tax exempt, then that's going to be a beautiful thing. Beyond that, beyond that, more importantly, there are plenty of apparel suppliers that will not sell to you if you do not have a valid tax ID, okay? There are plenty of them that won't sell to you if you don't have a valid tax ID. And this is a pain when you're a new customer and you're just getting started. It's painful if you're not able to go get the garments that you need from the suppliers that you need. Uh, so, Narkitha, um, you do still need to prove that you are a school system, but that is a conversation you'd have with our accounting department, actually. So, you uh, school systems get handled a little bit differently. Um, you don't need a tax ID, no, but uh, there are documents that you'll need to discuss with our accounting department. Okay. Um, uh, and then, uh, on top of all of this, many states require you to charge and pay tax. So again, this doesn't affect us at Transfer Express, but it affects you and your your home business. If you're not doing the tax thing properly, you can get in big trouble down the road and it is not worth it. It's not worth what could happen. Okay. Um, and then on top of all of that, uh, it's not difficult generally to get a sales tax ID. Uh, most states you can do this online and there's usually not a huge fee attached to it uh, so in the state of ohio for example it is a 25 dollars one-time fee to get a sales tax id and, and you know what i see a couple of you guys asking about ein um, different states have different terminology is what you'll sort of discover as you go one by one um, so some states call it EIN, some states call it sales tax id uh, i i I don't believe they're exactly the same thing, but I, I can't, um, this is where I, I can't tell you what each state requires of you. We've used Ohio as an example since we're located in Ohio. Uh, so in Ohio, for example, you can go to Ohio.gov and it's very easy to find the sales tax ID applications. It generally takes a day or two, it costs 25 bucks and it's bam, bam, done. And the state of Ohio calls the sales tax ID. Um, different states, I, I can't tell you what different states water. I can't tell you what the cost is, I can't tell you what the technology is, but my suggestion here is do the research, hit your state's website, find out what your state requires, oh yeah, okay, see, um, 
find out what your state requires and then pursue that. Okay? You definitely want to make sure that you have the proper terminology or that you have proper if you're going to start your home based business. Not only to make sure you're above board in terms of charging taxes, if you're supposed to be charging your customers taxes, but then again, uh, you don't want to live yourself based on wholesale people who cannot uh, sell to you or won't sell to you if you don't have the proper uh, paperwork. Tax ID, the important part of the puzzle, make sure you have it. Um, all right, so on to the next step. So uh, you've got your heat press, you've got sales tax ID, what will you sell? So what are you going to sell at your home-based business? So on the subject, man, let's talk about what you can heat press, right? So this is where keeping on top of trends is very important. So t-shirts, hoodies, uniforms, bags, jackets, and cooler towels it is amazing all of the things that you can have heat press sticks. It is amazing the amount of different things that you can decorate with a heat press. So the question becomes, what are you going to decorate? If you do decide that you're going to focus on t-shirts, what brand of t-shirts? Because again, this is different than it was 15 years ago where you bought hands or through the loon was it. Uh, today, there are a whole host of different t-shirts you can go with. Um, so uh, from a uh, district to alternative to Canvas Bella, Net, uh, Haynes, Dan, there you go, Katrina like Gilly. Um, so uh, all different t-shirts to go with. So my point here is that once you decide on going to sell, you can't just settle on hoodies or t You can't just settle on, okay, well, I'm going to find this. Do your digging. Make sure that you are selling the type of t-shirt that you want to sell from your home-based business. Ildan is a great brand. Fruit of the Loom is a great brand. But something to think about, remember that t-shirts aren't just t-shirts these days. You've got burnout t-shirts. You've got uh, slub style t-shirts. You've got uh, different textured t-shirts. You've got cotton. You've got 50-50. You've got performance t-shirts. You've got tri-blends. There are a million different types of t-shirts out there. So once you've decided to do your home-based business, it's going to come down to making sure you're going with a type of t-shirt that rolls with what you're trying to do with your business. If you're going to focus on uh, spirit and cheer and uh, cheerleaders and stuff of that nature, then perhaps you want a shirt that is thinner, something more fashion-based. If you're going to focus on sports, then yes, you want something thicker, something more durable. <clears throat> Um, so, uh, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, the point is to do your research and figure out what type of garment you're going to go with beyond the t-shirt, beyond the hoodie, beyond the bag. What, what is it? And does it contribute to the brand that you're trying to put out there? Um, so when you get to this point, my honest suggestion is try a couple different things. When you're deciding, okay, I, I know what I want to sell t-shirts. I know that I want to do the t-shirt thing, but what kind of t-shirt, what, what kind of t-shirt should I buy, Andy? Try a couple different things. Try Gildan, try Fruit of the Loom, try Alternative, try Canvas Bella, try a couple different things, get some of those tri blends that are super popular, and you decide based on the price point and the feel and the look, what's going to contribute to your brand. So who will you sell to? So you know you want to do the home-based business. You've got your sales tax ID. Um, you've got your heat press. You know you want to do the, the, the home-based business. Who are you going to sell to? So this is one of those things where everybody's got a different way of going about this. And there's a million and one different ways you can handle this part of your business. Some people start their home-based business already knowing who their target customer is going to be. Maybe you have an in with somebody. Um, maybe you have an in with a group of people that you know you can sell to, 
Okay. Maybe you already know who your target audience is going to be, or maybe you don't, maybe you're starting at the beginning and you're like, you know what, I'm going to do this home-based business and I'm going to figure it out as I go and more power to you. You can absolutely do this. Um, but with that being said, these are the questions you've got to ask yourself. So my suggestion here, if you're going to start a home-based t-shirt business, find a niche and own it. And here's what I mean by that. Uh, one of my favorite examples is uh, we had a customer at Transfer Express here who um, they uh, were a gymnastics mom. And that's how she started her business. She bought a heat press, put it in her garage, and she would just make gymnastics shirts for her daughter's gymnastics team. And it ended up turning into a beast of its own, uh, a beast of a whole different color uh, because the gymnastics team liked the shirt so much that she ended up getting invited to a tournament and making tournament shirts, gymnastics tournament. And what started off as just this little gymnastics thing she was doing for her daughter and her daughter's team ended up exploding into a full brick and mortar storefront um, that then turned into a second location, the next city over. And before you knew it, she was doing all sorts of stuff. She branched out beyond just gymnastics. Um, but the point is she started with a niche which in her case was gymnastics. And we see this in a lot of different places. I, I, I have a friend actually who's started their home-based business uh, with the local music scene. Uh, he takes advantage of the local music scene here he approaches bands and he offers to make bands their band shirts right uh the fan the shirts for the fans to wear the shirts for the band themselves to wear things to sell at their concerts that sort of stuff and it's it's a it's a small little niche but it's a way to start right so you ask yourself what are you involved in what is a community that you can step into that you know you can sell to maybe you've got some ideas already maybe you know this community um Maybe you've got friends in this community. Uh, what's a community you know you can sell to, okay? Um, and be an expert. If you're going to, if, if, if for example, uh, my friend who does the whole band shirt thing, he himself is a music nerd. He loves music. He listens to all kinds of music. He plays instruments. So when it comes down to it, he's the perfect person to get into that whole band shirt part of the business, right? So at the end of the day, ask yourself, what do you know? What are you the expert in? What can you speak to that you're able to sell and market to? So here's some examples uh, in terms of niches that you can get into. We see a lot of customers whose business is based uh, totally on their church. Um, churches uh, definitely need shirts, especially if you've got a larger church in your area, vacation Bible school, regular Sunday school, charity events, all kinds of things. So churches need garments. Festivals, baseball, spirit wear, car shows, 4-H. 4-H is another big one. Um, the LGBT community, that's another one. There's a lot of shirts to sell there. Uh, point is, there are a lot of different niches that you can start with. And this doesn't mean that this is going to define your business permanently. This is a place for you to start. This is a place for you to begin marketing yourself. And once you have some kind of customer center, once you once you have some kind of business coming in, that's when you expand a little bit and you go little by little based on needs and based on demand. So where will you sell? So uh, in um, a lot of places where you can sell it in person craft fairs tournaments events pop-up shops we've done webinars actually on this topic by itself a full 45 minutes talking about pop-up shops pop uh, talking about tournaments and that kind of thing um i would advise you to go look for flea markets too flea markets are the perfect place for you to take a box of transfers a box of t-shirts and your heat press Make sure you've got access to electrical, obviously, or, or take a generator if need be. But point being, that's the perfect place to press shirts. Uh, and again, you, you press them live on the spot so you're not wasting any stock. You're not having to make do with things like, oh, I made too many and I didn't sell enough. You press them there on, on the spot, right? Craft fairs are along that same lines. Uh, craft fairs are, are probably a step up from from uh, flea markets, maybe, since the people that are going to craft fairs are generally you know, that same type of community. Um, tournaments, events, 
This is obviously something that we got away from last year in 2020, but uh, I think we can all uh, safely assume that tournaments and events and, and in-person stuff is going to be back in 2021 if uh, there's a couple of months for any indication. Um, the idea is go out into your community, check your local city, and see what kind of events are in the area. For example, here in Mentor, Ohio, we have a uh, we have an event called the Better in Mentor Days, and that's a community event. If you were somebody starting a home-based business in Mentor, Ohio, you would want to get yourself to the Better in Mentor event. Have a booth or have a table and be selling shirts, whatever kind of shirts, you know. Uh, the point is to get yourself out there, to get yourself out there and to uh, be selling at live events like that. Um, and pop-up shops work too. If you have a concept, if you have a really cool concept, a design that you know will sell, um, and you you know you're going to be able to make it happen, you've got a location that will lend you some space for a day or two, a pop-up shop is a totally valid option also. I, I suggest if you're interested in the pop-up shop concept, I suggest you check out our webinar on that. Uh, we did a whole webinar on pop-up shops, so it's really uh, worth checking that out for more info. So if you're going to do a home-based storefront, like your garage or spare room or whatever, set regular hours. Uh, make sure that people know that they can come see you. Uh, and then have some kind of retail style display. If you're going to do the home-based business and you're going to bring people into your home and you're actually going to do it this way, then do it right. Uh, make sure to have yourself some kind of setup where they can come see you, uh, where you can show them that you are the real deal. Uh, you want to come off looking like uh, I might be a home-based business, but I can handle you. I can take care of anything you need, and here's what I got, right? Um, so if you are going to do the home-based thing and you are going to own it and you're going to work out of your home, if you're going to do some kind of store-based thing in your home, set regular hours and create a nice retail display. Um, so continuing this theme of where we're going to sell. So Etsy. Etsy. We've all heard of Etsy. I'm sure we've all been on Etsy. So Etsy is a great place to sell, too. There are positives and negatives, though. Okay? So on the plus side... Etsy is fairly easy to post new items, uh, to ship items from. Etsy is a great marketplace for sure, okay? Etsy is a great place to start. Um, Etsy is also well-known and respected. Everybody has used Etsy. Everybody's been to Etsy. I myself might have done some retail therapy last night and may have, <laughs> I may have hit my credit card too hard on Etsy. I don't know if I, I hope I'm not the only person that does that. Um, but uh, Etsy is a fantastic marketplace for people in, in our situations, uh, the garment decorators of the world. However, there are some difficult parts about Etsy. And I'm not saying that Etsy is not phenomenal because it is, but there are some challenges here. So first of all, it is hard to be unique on Etsy. <laughs> it's difficult to be unique. There are so many people on Etsy. There's so much stuff. Etsy. How do you be different? How do you be unique when there's so much uniqueness already out there? Um, and it's funny because if, if you've been on Etsy from the beginning, like I have, you've seen the evolution. You've seen Etsy start as just a crafty thing and turn into a full blown store experience now. <laughs> so it's uh, it's funny, but the downside is now people push the limit so much that it's it's hard. How do you get yourself unique enough that you raise above everybody else, right? Um, and then on top of that, manufacturers themselves can be on Etsy. <laughs> So sometimes I, I've, I've done that myself where I'm pouring over pages of Etsy stuff and I see something like, oh, that's cool. Look at that. And you discover, oh, my God, it's actually the manufacturer. Like, wait a minute, you're not a crafty person. Um, so point being that uh, Etsy really is a, a big, a big marketplace. Oh, good point, Lance. It did blow up during COVID for sure. Etsy really sort of grew its own legs and got up and walked away during COVID, man. Etsy is huge. It's doing its own thing. Um, and then on top of all of that, uh, how do you focus your energy on something that will pay off when there's so many things that can affect your listing? 
There are so many things that can affect where you appear on Etsy and how you appear and what searches you come up in. How much energy are you going to spend on that? How much energy is it worth spending on? Um, so Etsy is a great place to sell. I am by no means trying to talk anybody out of Etsy. Go for it. <laughs> TikTok. We're going there, Lance. Give me a hot second, actually. Um, Etsy is a great place to start. Uh, and Shopify, too, Michelle. Yes, Shopify is not bad. Um, but Etsy is a great place to start. But it's just something to think about that at the end of the day, unless you have something that is super unique and super special and only you, then Etsy is going to be a challenge. You'll get some sales off of it. You'll get some attention off of it, but it's hard to make a whole business based around it unless you're doing something truly unique. Um, Amazon or eBay, Christopher, that's another one. Amazon and eBay are good places too. Amazon has a lot of, a lot of caveats and a lot of bullet points. If you're going to do the whole Amazon thing, there's a lot of, a lot of buttons you have to tick, a lot of uh, things you got to do there. Um, and eBay is a good place too. Although, you know what? I hate to say this as a guy who was on eBay when eBay first came out. I leave it. I hate to say it. I feel like eBay's time may be slow coming to an end. So I know that if I were in that position, I don't know that I would spend a whole lot of time on eBay right now. Uh, plus, I, I can tell you that depending on who your audience is, eBay is not hip for that matter. So I, I don't know that eBay is really the best solution either. So having your own website is another important part of the puzzle here too. You definitely want your own website or spirit sale from stalls. Uh, so stall spirit sale allows you to create online stores. So uh, spirit sale is a great tool or just having a website in general. So you definitely want to have a website. First of all, give your customers a place where they're comfortable to place orders. And second of all, it's open 24 seven. The world lives on the internet these days. So if you don't have a website and social media, which I'm about to get to in a second here, if you don't have a website, you don't exist. You don't exist and there's nothing you're going to be able to do. You need a website. It does not have to be huge and elaborate. Um, if you're going to sell custom goods, then obviously it's a little bit harder to have a website people can purchase from if you're doing custom goods. But if you're doing some kind of stock stuff, if you're doing, if you have your niche, if you are selling to, you know, a certain community or a certain group of people and you've got your stock stuff, then you definitely, definitely, definitely want a website. So marketing your home-based business, marketing your business. Having an email list is still the best way to market. Um, and, and it's kind of funny because I know that uh, so many of us these days don't pay attention to all of our emails and it's kind of hit and miss which emails you do read and which emails you will be getting rid of. Um, so uh, at the end of the day, email can be hit and miss, but it is still the most effective way to market because it is so easy to send out emails. It is so easy to keep in contact with people via email. And sure, maybe not everybody's going to see it, but it doesn't hurt to do it. Um, and the other thing too is, again, it's so funny because 10 years ago, it would have been hard to maintain an email list and there weren't services for it, all that good stuff. Today, you can get free service for up to 2,000 names through MailChimp. So go hit up MailChimp.com if you need help keeping track of an email list. But the point is, when you're out doing your thing, whether you're doing it at a storefront or you're doing a pop-up shop or you're doing a community event or a flea market or a, a, wherever you've got yourself set up, collect emails. Have a clipboard out. Have a, a sign-up sheet where people can give you their emails. Um it is absolutely one of the best marketing tools at your disposal, especially in your guys' situation. When you are that small home-based business that's trying to get off the ground, people want to support you. People do want to uh, work with a home-based business. Um, so get yourself out there. Make it so that people can drop you their email and then keep in contact with them. Even if you just send an email out once every other month, 
uh, it's male chimp, M-A-I-L-C-H-I-M-P, chimp, uh, like monkey, male chimp. Um, so uh, even if you're sending an email out, you, maybe it's once a month, maybe it's once every other month, but the point is to keep in contact with your customers. Keep showing them what you've got coming. Keep showing them what you're doing. So absolutely have an email list, best way to market yourself when you're a home-based business. And also social media. Social media is that other important piece of the puzzle. So this, this is sort of the trifecta. Number one, you gotta have a website. Number two, keep in contact with your customers via email, have an email list. And number three, you have to have a social media presence. You have to. And it's so funny because this wasn't the case that many years ago. Uh, social media was hit or miss. Today, if you don't have social media, then people don't trust you. And I, I, I say this as one of those consumers that I absolutely fit this bill too. If I'm thinking about getting into a business with a company, I'm going to hit them up on Facebook first. And if I don't see them on Facebook, hmm, I have to wonder what's wrong with you that you don't have your business on Facebook. And suddenly I'm questioning if I should be dealing with you or not. So, uh, Social media is a very important piece of this puzzle. Not only does it allow you to interact with your customers, but it allows you to show them things. And uh, a big shout out to our friends at KC Swagger, who uh, are friends of ours here at Transfer Express, who are allowing us to use their social media as examples here. This is the lady's uh, Facebook page, some posts from their Facebook page. And this is a great example. They do this so well over at KC Swagger. This is a great example of how to market yourself on social media as a small business, right? So uh, it can be something simple, like just saying, hey, it's almost graduation time. Like as you're getting into the month of May, uh, we know that graduation is going to be happening. So take some pictures of some graduation ideas and throw it out there on social media. Hey, what do you think of these for graduation shirts? That's one of the best things that you can do with Facebook is run ideas by your customers. Show them some of the things you're thinking about, show them some of the ideas that you have, and ask them for their feedback. It's a great way to uh, fine tune your ideas. Oh, okay, well, that's thanks, Derek. I'm sorry to hear that. I, I don't know why Facebook does some of the things they do. I know that's frustrating, but, um, and keep in mind, it's not just Facebook these days. Remember that. It, Instagram. Instagram really blew up. It's hilarious because I remember when Instagram was kind of a joke and nobody was really using it. And then out of nowhere, they, they sort of rebranded themselves and fixed the problems. And now Instagram's a, a big, fat, hairy deal. So definitely uh, Facebook, Instagram, uh, definitely places you want to have yourself, uh, you want to have yourself present. And uh, again, notice how our friends at Casey's Swagger, all of her posts have her brand on them. Not just the uh, Facebook, um, not just her profile picture at the top left, but actually look at the photograph. Um, the photograph of the t-shirts on the left and then the graphic that she posted on the right there. Notice she's got Casey Swagger on both of her pictures. So absolutely brand yourself, have your name on there so people know it's you. Um, and this is part of making a brand. If you're going to come up with a brand, if you're going to do this, do it all the way. <laughs> no joke, a billion dollars was a steal for Zuckerberg, wasn't it, with the whole Instagram thing? I can't argue with that. So uh, Lance or somebody brought up TikTok just a minute ago. So we absolutely need to shout out TikTok. And specifically, specifically, we want to shout out to our friend Skylar Grace, who uh, is one of our favorite TikTokers. If you have not seen uh, Skylar Grace's TikTok stuff, then please go check her out. Um, so TikTok, here's the deal. Uh, TikTok is a huge audience that is present for a lot of different things. There's people who use TikTok for specific reasons, and there are people who will just scroll through TikTok for hours at a time. If you haven't experienced TikTok, I advise you to go check it out as a business owner. The reason is, the reason is that TikTok is an audience that is different than Facebook. If you guys aren't familiar, Facebook is now the older crowd, right? People in their 30s, 40s, 50s. Facebook is not the young crowd anymore. Now, if your target audience is going to be the adult crowd, then all right, you're good on Facebook, Instagram, what have you. But if you're shooting for a younger crowd, 
you do need to be present. <laughs> Kimberly, you caught me. She was the dorm room business owner I was talking about. Yes. <laughs> um, and I get it. TikTok is one of those things where some people, I, I understand, TikTok is just not the thing that we want to deal with. We don't understand it. Or TikTok can be, honestly, if you go try to make a video, there's a lot. There's a lot that goes into those TikTok videos, man. But this is where the youth are located. If you're going to market yourself to the young crowd and you want to do this, then by God, you need to get into TikTok. And we're seeing this more and more ourselves here at Transfer Express. When we created our TikTok channel, uh, we started putting things out there. And we, we actually did a lot of trial and error, too. The types of videos that were seen most, the types of videos people wanted to see, getting on board with some of the silly trends and stuff. Um, at the end of the day, if you want the young generation to pay attention. Tisha, you're right. Gen X is here. Gen X is here. They're present. But Gen X wants you to be on TikTok. <laughs> um, so uh, I absolutely would advise you. I don't, I'm not saying you have to love TikTok. For those of you who aren't into it, you don't have to be into it. But if you're going to be a, a successful business owner, a responsible business owner, you sort of got to check it out. And you got to come up with a way to get yourself on there. Okay. Um, so check out TikTok, find your audience. And it can be silly things. Like even if you're not focusing totally on decorating garments, even if you're doing some of the silly trends on TikTok, it's a way for people to see you and to see your design and to see your brand. And that's the catch. That's what you're shooting for here. Even if people aren't, you know, enthralled by you heat pressing you know, t-shirts, the point is to show them what you are capable of. So creating artwork, cre creating artwork, we've tried to make easy for you here at Transfer Express. So some of you guys will come to us with artwork ready to go, and that's great. More power to you. But we appreciate that. Um, but you don't have to have artwork ready to go. We can provide you with artwork here at Transfer Express using our design center. If you have not played with our Easy View Design Center, then I really encourage you to check it out. At transferexpress.com, at the top middle of the page, you will see a link for Design Center. Um, definitely check our, uh, our design center and play with it. We have thousands of pieces of artwork ready to go for your use. Uh, an example here on the screen, you see uh, two Compton High School designs that we have put together using our stock artwork here at Transfer Express. And on top of it, uh, the uh, if you use our artwork in the design center, if you use our artwork instead of custom artwork, it is actually cheaper and faster uh, using our artwork as opposed to custom artwork. So something to think about. Um, and then uh, on top of it, um, what you see here on my screen is we've done a gang sheet. We've done two designs that are put together on the same piece of paper. So when you're in the design center, you see that dotted line that goes around the uh, workspace there. That dotted line is the piece of paper that you're paying for. So fill that paper up. Fill the paper up. Uh, so uh, important things to note, Terry, if we bring uh, our own artwork, does it become yours? No, absolutely not. Your artwork is your artwork. We only reproduce it for you. We don't own it. Um, now, it's worth noting that if we have to do anything to your artwork to make it screen printable, like if you send me bitmaps and I have to make vector artwork, you don't own the vector artwork. Um, we own it to make transfers, but it's not like we put your artwork in a catalog or we sell your artwork to people or anything like that. So still belongs to you. Um, but uh, the whole point here is our online designer is easy to use. You can upload your own custom artwork into it. You don't have to use ours, but you can create your gang sheet. You can put your order together, give it a quantity, put the colors in, and boom, place it all in one place. It is super easy, super simple to use. Uh, Latanya, we still have credits. They don't expire, do they? Um, some kinds of credits, Latanya, do expire over time. It depends on what kind of credit it is. That would be a question you'd want to call in and ask customer service. Um, some types of credits don't expire, though, no. Uh, some do. It just depends on where they came from. All right. Um, so 
branding your t-shirts this is something that I wanted to throw out there because this is so popular right now it's so funny to me because a couple years ago this was still unheard of uh, but branding your own t-shirts putting your own tag in a t-shirt you can purchase tagless shirts um, you can uh, purchase rip out tags uh, the, the types of shirts where you can tear the tags out the tear away tags um, when you're purchasing garments, you just need to specifically look for tearaway tags. But regardless, the point is you peel, uh, you uh, rip out the tag, and then you press down your own tag in its place. Now, keep in mind here, the goal, the whole reason to do this is to put your name on it, okay? The whole goal is to put your name on it. You don't want to write a novel, and that's in my photograph here. You see, we've kept simple. I mean, obviously, you want to do something interesting per se, but we've kept this simple here. Leo's apparel, the size, the make, and made in the USA. You do not want to put a bunch of text, and you do not want to put a bunch of artwork on a tag. Um, you know what, Paul? Tearaway tag shirts are sometimes a little bit more expensive, not generally all the time. Um, that is something you kind of got to do your own research on. Uh, a couple years ago, I would have told you, yes, tearaway tags are more expensive. But you know what? Honestly, Paul, they're becoming so much more the standard. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Oh, gosh. Uh, I apologize if you're not seeing the tag slide. But um, so, oh. There we go. Hopefully that helped. Um, but anyway, point here being um, that uh, the the goal of this is to put your name on the shirt. Okay, so you don't want to go crazy with the text and the artwork on a tag. You don't want to put a novel. You don't want to put a whole bunch of stuff. You inject maybe a little bit of personality, uh, maybe something a little bit unique, um, but you, you keep it simple is the idea. Gosh, guys, I, I'm not sure why it's still on the creating artwork slide because I've definitely changed it. I am so sorry about that. I don't know why that's happening. <laughs> Clearly, we have to go back to the drawing board with our IT issues. I, I'm not sure why this is going on this way today, so I'm, I'm so sorry. Um, but uh, one last point here. So uh, the once you do have uh, your tag idea, you see what I've done is I'm showing you now the same gang sheet we were looking at before with Compton High School. But you see what I've done here this time is I've taken all of the extra space and I've put a bunch of tags on there. So again, the whole idea is that when you're working on a gang sheet in easy view, when you're doing your artwork in easy view, you've got all that extra space. You're paying for that sheet of paper. Uh, absolutely fill that sheet up. So again, what I've done is I've taken all of the spare space in my Compton High School design and I've plugged in some tags. I've got a small, a medium, a large, and an extra large. I plugged in four tags on that gang sheet. Um, but the whole point here is uh, fill up the gang sheet, utilize all your space, and uh, tags are a great way to do that. Tags are a great way to do that. Um, now, uh, with that being said, again, the biggest piece of advice I could give you guys, if you're going to do tags, keep it simple. Do not do a bunch of artwork. Do not do a bunch of text. Remember that the whole point of the tag is to have your name on it and then the fabric makeup, the size, and where it was made. That's all. You don't want to put a whole bunch of stuff there. Okay? Whew. Okay. There we go, and we're coming in at just under an hour. Um, that was a whole bunch of information in a short amount of time, I know. Uh, so again, I wanna remind everybody that the webinar has been recorded. You can go back and watch the recording. It will be posted at transferexpress.com backslash webinars. Uh, we will also email you the slide uh, and uh, you'll be able to see all the slides and all that good info. Um, 
I appreciate all of you joining us today. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, if you have suggestions or you have ideas you'd like to share with us, please hit us up at info at transferexpress.com. If you have not been to our blog, please check out our industry award-winning blog. Our marketing team does a phenomenal job of keeping it updated, blog.transferexpress.com. We will, uh, we will definitely be coming at you again next month with more interesting information. In the meantime, thank you for joining and have a fantastic rest of your Thursday, folks.